Or if I can hit that plate one-handed. Will I? All right. Hey guys, Harrison Jones here with Harry's Holsters. Right here I have a Sig P365 that was sent to me by Frog Bones out of uh, Melbourne, Florida. They're a Sig Elite dealer. They have my P365, the one that was having the issues. They shot, I think it was 600 rounds through it, and they didn't have any issues. Now this gun, I had 100 rounds left of some of the same ammo I was shooting out of that one, not the Magtech, but actually some 115 grain uh, Privy. And my gun was choking like crazy on it. Michael, who's behind the camera right now, was he's with Lynx Defense. He shot it. What were your issues with it? Same, failed to feed. Failure to feed, all right. Had some issues with a couple other guys out at uh, my home range, and then Monty and Austin didn't shoot that in. You saw they had plenty of issues with the MagTech. Now I've got some 115 grain independence. We're just gonna put 100 rounds through this gun uh, live. This gun has had 12,000 rounds, and you can look and see by the wear on the mag and the inside is similar where you can definitely tell this gun has had some serious rounds here, so I believe the 12,000 round uh, number they had. So let's just see how it does. Michael, if you want to get in close here and you can see my grip, we'll see if any problems come up with this gun and what the issues are. If there's... All right, 10 rounds. We're just gonna put 100 rounds through this today, all live stream, see how it does. As you can see, another uh, 10 rounds. I've got my own theories on why the gun worked with their, the test they did, and I think it is ammo related. But I was actually in my local gun store, and the gun's supposed to be coming in to me today, and they've also sent me uh, another P365. They allowed me to purchase it, and this one has all the updates, so I'll be putting some rounds through that one as well to see if that does better than the old one. But what I think was the chamber depth of my gun was too shallow. And the reason I said this, it didn't work really with any of the ammo we were using a gunsmith at my store. Got 10 in that one. He uh, took a look at it and the round in the chamber, just a slight, like if you put a, uh, if you put some kind of dimensional measuring device across the top of the chamber, it was actually just barely the point to where it could potentially impact the top of the round. Obviously not having enough room in that chamber for that round to go all the way into battery. And he also, I couldn't really tell the difference, but he said the recoil spring in this gun felt a little bit stronger. So, and it looked like we took pictures of them, which I'll probably throw in in this video, or no, this is a live stream, so I can't edit it, but maybe to follow up, I'm gonna shoot the original gun again before I send it back to SIG. And they should, uh, let me get this last round here. It's a little bit hard to get in. The, Last round. Another 10 rounds, fine. I really don't think it was user error though. And the reason I say that is every time Austin and I, and the, I don't know if we did it on video, but we would always, we talked about how we'd use that little groove right there. And when I talked with uh, Mike at Frog Bones, he was saying he thought maybe somebody could have their hand in the serrations here and then their thumb back here and they'd have two points of contact to stop the slide. Let's actually see right now. It seems to be running fine. I put 30 rounds through it without issue. So let's see. That's running my thumb right up there on the slide and no issues with this gun. So I'm gonna shoot at least another 10, maybe another 20 or 30 rounds like that with my thumbs on the slide and let's see if we have any issues but i really don't see any uh this gun i haven't had any issues i really think the gun i got was out of spec and like i said we're gonna have to get the we've got the gun coming back in i've got multiple types of ammo and including i've got a case that i haven't opened to the privy uh partisan that it was choking on before and I've also got 
a case of the uh, Blazer 115 that just arrived. So I'll take those out and I'll measure the overall length of that and take a look at the projectile shapes, see if that could play a role. And I might have my gunsmith, he might be willing to, uh, I don't know if he'll want to have his face on camera, but he might talk a little bit on it. He's a very knowledgeable guy. So Monday when I pick the gun up and send this one off to them, I'll have him uh, give his thoughts if he is in the shop. Let's see. The gun is getting a little bit hot here. Should be gong a little. Not bad for 25 yards on a gun. How does that look, Michael? Not bad. So does this gun seem to be running a whole lot better? Yeah, I hadn't had a single issue with that one. Do you want to switch off on the camera here once I load these mags? And come on, man. Actually, I'm gonna, like I told you guys, I'm gonna continue to kind of ride the slide a little bit. I'm riding that slide right there with my front thumb and so far no issues so we'll get a close-up too, another close-up of that just so you guys know what's going on and in the comments below I'd love to hear your thoughts on the p365 I may not get to answer all these questions like I have in the other videos it got to be uh, almost a job answering all these questions as you guys can imagine over a thousand comments on one of the videos and close to that on another one. But 10 in this one. I really think this gun is, uh, it's got a lot of potential. It is very small. So if you got, I've got probably average size hands for an adult male that's six foot tall. So if you're somebody that's six three, six four, and you've got really big hands, you may have a little bit of trouble with this gun, just getting your hands around it and keeping control of it. And a lot of people, you can see I've been using the, uh, the slide lock, slide release, whatever you want to call it, to drop the slide and no issues with failure to feed. And people were saying that might've been the issue with the gun that I had. We use both methods, multiple shooters, and same issues. And I'll also say for a new shooter, they can have a tendency I'm gonna do it right here on purpose. They can have a tendency to kind of like ride it forward a little bit and let drop in. You see this case, I was riding it forward a little bit. Didn't have full momentum, it's still seated all the way. Now, I'm gonna dig my both thumbs in. Both thumbs, you can see maybe where it's taking a little skin off right there on my thumb. No issues, the gun is still running. Let's try a little one-handed on the gong. That's completely me missing, not the gun, unfortunately. For me that is did have a failure to lock back there on the slide maybe in the video you can pause it down and see if uh, my hand had any issues with that but I did have a pretty loose grip because I was just trying to focus on trigger control with the one-handed shooting so I don't know what that is but that's the only type of failure whatsoever that I've seen now, honestly for a self-defense gun if the only thing I was seeing was failure to lock the slide back that wouldn't bother me personally that much. You look at a lot of guys, shooters like Steve Fisher, he's got big hands with a two-handed grip. Nothing locks back for him. It's just the way his grip is, and I've seen a lot of really good shooters. The way they shoot, a slide will not lock back on that gun. That right there was an issue of probably momentum. I don't think my thumb pushed it down, but at the same time, here, I don't want to load. I might shoot a few more rounds through this. I'm just going to load two in this mag real quick. Or I'll load four. And do a little. I'm going to shoot this gun 
just with a, that's the only grip I'm gonna have on it. We did this in our initial test, you also saw the Frog Bones guy do it, and I predict it's gonna lock back on the slide. Now, if I were to grip it down like this, even with a stiffer grip, it wouldn't lock back, but this, it's still gonna lock back, I bet. So let's, you see, loosen that trigger. Failed to lock back on that. So obviously if you don't have enough grip pressure, it seems I was wrong and you need a little more momentum on this for it to lock back all the way. And I'm gonna try some two-handed or one-handed, uh, I'm gonna try, oh, we got 10 rounds in the gun. So again, I'm gonna try to And I'm really pressing into that slide right now to try to get it to. All right, three more rounds, so. And two, and then I'm just gonna do a soft grip. My wrist is locked. I'm gonna say that's a stronger grip than a lot of people shooting this are gonna have, but it still didn't lock back on that last round. So that's something to take into account, so there is some user error there. But I'm not gonna completely blame the gun. Now, I'm just having too much fun shooting this thing right now. It's a fun little shooter. So, and as you can see, the size of the gun, shooting 100 rounds in a short period of time, it's not doing anything for my skills increasing it right now, but it's a fun little gun to shoot. Got six more rounds, and Michael, I know he's behind the camera right now, but he is gonna shoot this thing on camera. Real quick, I'm gonna make him. Again, I'm gonna lock in. It's hurting my fingers, actually, they're bouncing off, but I cannot get this thing to stop cycling or not lock back when using two hands, even when pressing into the slide. Pull up one more box. I'm gonna let Michael shoot. Oh, one round. Now Michael's gonna shoot it. He's telling me behind the camera he doesn't want to get in front of the camera, but I want to have two shooters shoot this thing just so we know. That way nobody can kind of call BS on what's going on. Another box of the Independence, 115 grain, just cheap ammo. Now I will say the one I had, believe it or not, would actually lock back on the final round when only using one hand or when limp wristing, as long as you held it high. So that's kind of weird that this one will not lock back. But and that happened with both Austin and myself. Sorry you're watching a lot of mag loading here. It's probably not that exciting. Get this last one jammed in. So I'm, I'm excited about this gun. For a lot of people, it's gonna add a lot to the market. Myself, this is my carry gun right here. Block 19 and it is clear. In my insider holster, gotta pimp this, guys. But really is for somebody carrying a Glock 43 Smith Weston shield size gun, adds a lot to the market. Having that extra capacity when you're shooting like this, when you're shooting a Glock 43 with only six rounds, you know you're gonna run out and it's you feel like you're just getting started with this gun. You feel somewhat appeased with that 10 round and if you're using a self-defense situation like say a carjacking of some sort or some situation say you had to shoot through auto glass then i've got these two mags right here we're gonna switch over the camera switch over the gun to michael all right man put some rounds through but if you're shooting through auto glass or something having that extra couple of rounds maybe i shot through auto glass
Now let's see, his thumbs are riding the slip. If I had to lock back, that might have been your finger. Yeah. You think it was your thumb? Yeah, probably. The way I was holding it. Definitely. Like right I said, that's that. not a huge issue as long no, as the gun runs. because I did it to the Glock earlier today. Yep. So. That other target doesn't seem to like you. Yeah. <laughs> I just said, I'm shooting on paper. Ah. That time it locked back, so. I think it was just riding the riding the slide release because I did it earlier today but as well. you were having, when you shot this last time, we didn't get on camera, not this gun, but my gun, you had multiple failures to go into battery, did you not? Out of the 20 rounds you shot, what do you guess you had? Five to eight failures yeah. to go into battery? And that was mostly from the mag change to release. But. Yeah, but you had multiple within the string of the fires also. Yeah. So, here, we're going to finish off. I'll finish off the last 30 rounds if you want to. And sorry if this is a boring video, guys, but I had this gun. I wasn't planning on doing a video with it. And I was going out to the range with Michael today. I thought I'd have the gun from them sooner, but I, uh, they sent me the credit card information to buy the other gun. They're shipping the guns together, obviously. They sent that to me a little bit later. Then I thought, I mean, they've got busy jobs. I've got a busy life. So I was, it took me longer to get it to them. So on both of our, uh, Sides took a little longer than I think either of us thought it would, but we got it. We got all the information through. They've got the guns coming to me. I really want to thank them for the opportunity to test out that new gun. They're hard to get right now, and I really didn't want to pay gun broker prices, which you guys know can be a little bit insane. Most uh, single elite dealers, a lot of them I heard of. I mean, this gun, as long as, if, as long as I slow down. I'm shooting a nice little group. I don't, I've got little clusters over there on that plate. And when I'm doing a six o'clock, or I'm doing a dead center hold on that, the six sights are regulated to shoot center of the dot. I'm just hitting right on the bottom little part of that target. This thing's a tack driver with more practice. I mean, I could probably get a four inch group, maybe a three inch group at 25 yards if I really got to know the gun. So. But no issues here as far as uh, hands on. I'm going to try to get this thing to fail right here in these last 20 rounds, pushing it into the slide because I don't think it will. Might get a failure to lock back, but everything else. Let's see, last couple of rounds here going into the mag. And if any of you guys own a CP365, let me know your experiences. I just want to do this video live, that way everybody knows what's going on. And also, this gun has not been clean. Frog Bones sent it to me. Uh, it looked like it was pretty dirty from the range. It looked like a range gun where they just kept applying lubricant, hadn't really cleaned it. I'm sure it had been cleaned a couple times in the 12,000 rounds, but they certainly didn't clean it up real nice for me before I got it, and I'm fine with that. That's kind of the way I wanted it. Let's see. So I've really got my thumb into those forward serrations right there. My rear thumb, I'm going to do kind of like a wrap around right there to get as much pressure. Not stopping. Last 10 rounds here, guys. You saw that my thumbs are a little bit worn out there. You can see all the gun pattern degree on my handles, but last 10 rounds, I'm gonna look. What's that plate down there? A 12 inch plate at about yep. 25 yards? Ah, we did have a failure. One failure to go into battery. Last round, and I'm keeping. You can see. You can see that on video. Now 
not sure what that was. That was shooting one-handed. This is a short gun. There's a short barrel, so there's not a lot of room for travel. I'll let you guys be the judge of what you think that is. Was it user error? Was it the gun? Was it the ammo? Who knows, but overall, this gun's obviously running a lot better than the gun I had from them. And I was hitting, like I said, a 12-inch plate. So, all right, guys, Michael's told me to wrap it up. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope this is giving you some good info. Check out harrysholsters.com. Check out Frogbones Tactical for pre-orders on these things. And I'll see you guys in the next video.